Hi everybody, I'm Zilla Blitz and welcome. Today we're gonna take a look at one of the classic modules from the Lock and Load Tactical System, Heroes of the Pacific, from of course, Lock and Load Publishing. Now this full standalone module takes us to the Pacific Theater in World War II. We've got US forces versus Japanese forces, spider holes, caves, tunnels, bonsai charges, it's all here. Let's jump in and take a look. So one thing to say first as we kind of flip this over here is that this is going back in time quite a bit to a more emergent period of the Lock and Load tactical system. This module published in 2016. So of course, as we're making this video, it's about seven years ago when this came up. And I think we've seen an evolution of the system, both in rules and both in what you get the box as well. So some things to talk about, I think, with that. Complexity here is listed as a five. Now on the Heroes of Bitter Harvest module that we just looked at, the complexity is listed as a six. And I think this again is a system that very much the complexity ranges. You know, if you're playing just leaders and infantry units with a few support weapons, complexity probably drifts closer to a four. But then when you start into adding, you know, airstrikes, offboard artillery, some of the unique rules and stuff like that, a bunch of armor and bigger scenarios, then the complexity ramps up and I think it probably goes, you know, considerably past that, that, that five, maybe up closer to the six or the seven scale there too, uh, but certainly not up in the eight, nine, 10 scale. That's, it's not that type of a system. Um, the other thing to say about this is what's not in here too is a solo system. Now this game is rated as a seven. As we saw in the Heroes of Bitter Harvest system uh, module, you get the full solo rules with that module. And what I'm not 100% sure of is whether you could take, for example, could you get the Heroes of Bitter Harvest module and then apply those solo rules to this system? And judging by the way some of those cards are used, I'm not sure that's quite the case there. I think you might, in order to play this one, with the solo rules, you might need the dedicated lock and load tactical solo system to pick that up you know, outside of this one here. But in any case, very easy to play with both, playing both sides, solitaire, uh, different, a solitaire rating is a seven and that feels about right if you're playing both sides for it. But there is no solo AI bot in this. Again, reflecting the more emergent nature of this module as to compared to some of their later modules. Players is listed as one to two, uh, playing time two to four, which of course, there's 12 scenarios in this one. So that's gonna depend on the size of the scenario, the length of the scenario, the complexity of the scenario and all that kinds of stuff too. So let's jump in now and take a look at what's inside the box. One of the things that strikes me as I look this over is that I think there's a lot of fun scenarios in here and bringing the tactical system with jungle combat and beach landing scenarios that looks pretty cool so here's our dice red and white now first up let's talk a little bit about the rules manual this is the World War II era rules manual 1930 to 1959 version 4.1 since then the current rule set is version 5.1 and it's if you get that rule booklet it's a full I think 170 pages and it covers the whole system whereas this is a more limited rule set and it's a version out of date. And I think there was a substantial overhaul between four and five. And if we look here, just even at the length, you know, this is 65 pages, of course, covering just World War II, whereas the full version 5.1 rule set is over 170 pages. So, yeah, you know, th that brings the question as to whether this would be a good module to start with. Um, I think if you were going to start with this one, I, I would much rather start with the most recent rule set, both for clarity's sake and comprehensiveness sake, and then just for the efficiency sake, that you don't want to necessarily learn 4.1 and then have to change anything you're doing if there's changes that have happened to the system between 4.1 and 5.1. So while this is fully playable, of course, on its own, if you're thinking on expanding past this module, it might make more sense to either get the, the separate up to date, the full, most recent manual version 5.1, learn that as you play this one, or start with a module like Heroes of the Bitter Harvest and then backfill, picking up this module after you kind of learn the 5.1 rules and applied it to that. Because the version 5.1 rules, of course, will work with this module. That's the idea behind them. They work for with any module, but it's just, you're, you know, you're kind of a, a version out of date with this one right here. And maybe I would assume at some point, this one will get updated to the, the more recent version. But if we take a quick look at the manual, you know, we got 60 over 60 pages again uh, very typical of lock and load publishing you know large print so it's easy to read two columns lots of graphics and information here to look at so I don't see any reason why this would be something you couldn't pick up and play the only question would be whether it makes the most sense to start with the most recent version and then backfill into this one here but these look perfectly clear very well executed really nice rule book um, you know it's it's it just got it's good it's well done so really not too much more to say about that one other than yeah this looks good 
and the only question is whether you're going to get 5.1. Let's take a look now at the module rules and scenarios booklet. This is about 40 something, a little over 40 pages. And again, as we mentioned, most of it's filled up with scenario information. I will say, however, and I think that's worth looking at because this is kind of some of the stuff that I think makes this module unique are some of the, the special module specific rules that show up. We get some for weapons like the Japanese 50 millimeter mortar and things. We get Japanese stick bombs, but then we get some special characteristics of Japanese forces. For example, the heroes function a little bit differently. Japanese snipers are here. Banzai attacks are, are of course an element of the scenarios here. Ninjutsu movement as well. And then as we drift over in here, we get some of the, the kind of the American forces rules and things like that. LVT-4s, so beach landings are in this. This looks particularly cool. I mean, some of the Pacific beach landing scenarios look really, really neat, so I'm excited to try some of those. Then we get another set of rules that are specific not to the units, but to the terrain. So, well, the LVT-4s represent beach landings and things, but we get caves in here. We get collapsed entrances and tunnel movements, as well as star shells for night combat and things like that, too. So uh, the module rules, about six pages of module rules to kind of adapt the system specifically for World War II combat in the Pacific. And then we go into the scenario rules. And again, there are 12 of them. We can tend to take a look at them. We get a bunch that are inland, like Guadalcanal, of course. So they're not all kind of specific to beach landings, but, and again, vary in size and things like that too. Here we go to our first beach one right here, which is Tara, November 20th, 1943. We can see the beach and water hexes here, which are cool. I mean, that looks like a really fun scenario to play. And then we have a couple more in here. I know there's a bunch on different beaches. This one's inland, Dutch New Guinea, May 28th, 1944. And as we come over here, White Beach. So this one is White Beach 1. This one is Peleliu on September 15th, 1944. So again, a number of beach scenarios here to capture the essence of Pacific combat and a number of jungle inland scenarios as well. So it looks like they've done a really good job of kind of presenting a wide range of scenarios for the lock and load tactical system to deploy in the Pacific theater. All right, let's take a look at our counters. We got three counter sheets, one for the US, one for the Japanese, and one for markers. If we look at the markers here, we can see again, relating to some of the kind of the unique rules for this system, caves here, star shells, uh, Japanese bonsai attacks up here, and then some more traditional ones for things like moved, assault moved, acquiring, all these kinds of things, bunkers, a lot of bunkers in here as well. Flip side, oh well, they're all printed on both sides. And these are largely, except for these larger ones, the vehicle ones, uh, most of these counters, well, these other counters are five eighths of an inch. So some standard ones here, some collapsed entrance ones for those tunnels. Of course, as the US, you're trying to, to block up the tunnel entrances and the caves and things like that, then abandoned and a bunch of kind of other informational pieces here for markers as we go forward. So that looks good. Nice set that right there. Here are the Japanese counters. Lots of infantry and support weapons, some limited amount armor down here. And again, we have their skill sets in here for this scenario. I think the Japanese stick bombs are on the other side of this one. Here is their 50 millimeter mortars, some leaders, uh, ground units as well, snipers. So all kinds of fun things to play with in these scenarios. Japanese armor down here, we have type 95 tanks and then a type 97 tank, it looks like. So some other things in here, some limited kind of uh, artillery and support weapons like that as well. We flip these over, we can take a look here. Here are the Japanese stick bombs that are there as well as some other support weapons. So nice clean counter set, looks really good. Finely printed as always from Lock and Load Publishing. This stuff is really good here. Then we get to the US infantry units here with their leaders. I th I'm not sure if they're all Marines or if the stars here designate, maybe these are Marines and these are army. That might be very well to be the case. But yeah, these have a higher fire parting rating, so maybe these are the Marine units. I'm not sure though, that would be speaking a little bit beyond my, my, my knowledge at this point. We have some US armor down here. We've got the M5A1, M4A2s, M4A1, M4A3R3s. So a bunch of different tanks and then M3 and an M10 as well for vehicles too. Lots of tons of infantry here. So again, highlighting the nature. Armor, not the big deal in the Pacific. Of course, it was all infantry, jungles, beach landings and things. Now, oh, these are the LVT4s right here. There's two of them and I think there's more we missed a few there too, right? I think there's some more. Yeah, there's some more back here on the counter sheet here too. So we have some more LVT4s here that can be used. There's three or four more here. So for number scenarios for the beach landing ones, you'll be using those. Those beach landing ones, I think would be really fun to play out. I think those would be really exciting as well as the jungle ones. I, I just really kind of like the nature of a tactical system in, the, in jungle combat, Pacific combat. So I'm excited to play these.
All right, there's our spider hole markers there too. So now we come to our player aids. And this again, I think it shows a little bit kind of how the system has e is evolving as it's gone forward a little bit. Uh, this one here is the rule reference card. So specific things, again, some of these specific rules like Japanese stick bombs, weapon jamming, I guess that's natural, but Japanese stick bombs for this specific theater and these scenarios here, Japanese 50 millimeter mortars, kind of talking about some of the specific rules there, and then a bunch more on the back here for all of the things that you'll need to look up, ordnance versus infantry, offboard artillery, and things like that. So nice handy rule reference card for you there as well. This is our skill reference card printed on both sides that describes what the skill does and how it can be deployed. And again, these are two-sided to represent all the skills in the game. So, and I noticed in, in Heroes of the Bitter Harvest, uh, these are also cards that you can set beside the board. But this reference card, I'm sure, will work really, really well too. Then another two-sided player reference card, we get uh, die roll modifications. These look like a lot of the combat and movement types of things and morale influences. So a lot of the charts that we're looking up in a full terrain effects chart for the game as well. And I imagine these are these wouldn't have changed, although if you did get the version 5.1 rules, you'd be able to look at those, the charts and things that come with that as well. So be able to compare and contrast here, but I would assume they would work well with both systems. All right, so there we go. That and still not done. Again, always a plethora of player aids. Now this one in the Heroes of the Bitter Harvest, we had the unit cards that presented these. This is the, the previous way of doing that where you have the information and the counter representation here. So you'd keep this eight and a half by 11 to the side and be able to reference this for all of the information on the units as you're playing it. Whereas the system now has evolved to having those unit cards that sit beside the map that you'd be able to look at that way. I'm sure this works very well too, just a little bit different type of a system. Then we have the sequence of play here on the back with some other particular rules and things to be able to have handy as you're playing. Not done yet, there is one more single-sided player aid that is our turn record track, as well as some die roll modifiers and victory point track here as well that you'd be keeping out handy. This one is single-sided with a space for casualties in the middle and then optional speed modifiers too. So great, that looks like there. Now we'll take a look at the maps and these are pretty cool. Now, these are the standard one inch size maps and there are five of them in here. And I'll show these, these should fit really nicely. I'll show some close ups on them too. But uh, these again, one inch hexes, roughly eight inches wide by about 13 inches geomorphic. So they all fit together. This is number 38 representing jungle with a slight clearing in it and some sort of a structure over there. A little bit of altitude here on the other side. So that's one of the maps. I think I should be able to show all of these just because they're small and there are five of them and we can fit them right on the screen here too. I'll show some, some zoomed up closes up here. Here we get a little bit of water, trail, more jungle, and a little bit of structures down here, a small town or village that we're looking at. These are cool. I mean, they bring you right into the Pacific Theater. And these, of course, are not the 4X, uh, the X size ones, the bigger ones and things. These are the standard ones, but these look very playable and excellent. Again, more jungle. We've got a hill. It's rather open here for this one. And some, some foliage and some jungle over here, as well as some village here with the trail going through it. So there we go. Take a look at that one. And now 31 here is our... Beachfront, very cool. Water, so the LVT is pulling up here and they gotta land on the sand and break in. We've got a little structure over there and then the, the beach running up to the edge of the jungle as we go through. I think these would be really fun to play. I'm not sure if anyone's out there has played some of the beach landing scenarios. I'd be curious to hear how you like them, but I think this looks like a really fun, fun thing to play. And we get one more, map number five, which I think again is inland. This one has altitude so one two three levers up three layers up till you get to the top here jungle all around with some clearing on the outside map 32. so a quick look and an unboxing of one of the core modules back from 2016. still a lot of fun gameplay here again and hopefully some of that information might help if you're thinking on picking this one up as to what you might want to do to move forward as you would go into the system but very excited to give these scenarios a try i think this is going to be a lot of fun to play these thanks so much for watching i'll put a link to a couple of other videos related to the system up here now and if you have any questions i'd be happy to answer them if you've played this system i'd be curious to hear what you think about it uh, if you played the heroes of the pacific uh, modules or scenarios which ones you might like and things like that but thanks again for watching have a great day